Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and continuing the trend on Kickstarter projects this week, we are looking at the 101 Hero 3D printer on Kickstarter. This is the lowest cost 3D printer ever on Kickstarter and today I'm going to tell you why I backed it. Welcome back guys. Okay, so let's get straight into it. What is the 101 Hero? Why is it on Kickstarter? And why did I back it? Well, this is a 3D printer, like all the other 3D printers I've covered on Kickstarter. But what makes this one interesting is it is at the lowest price point that we have ever seen. My pledge cost me $59 US plus shipping. I got in at the early bird to just see what would happen with this project. And even now it's only about $74 for a 3D printer that comes with everything you need. But how have they done it? Well, if you look carefully at the printer, you can see that it's made out of plastic, right? That's not a terrible idea. At a machine this tiny, it could actually work okay. The rails are still metal, which means the, the movement axes will still be fairly rigid, but the rest of it is plastic and it's very minimal plastic. And it's also identical components. Each axis is the same mold. Like we saw with the Trinus campaign, where each axis was the same assembly, they've done something similar here, except with the injection molded parts, which means you have only one tool to make all of them instead of having to invest in lots of tools which saves like a third of the you know you spend a third of the cost you would otherwise it saves tons of cash instead of having to go into that tooling so that's one clever approach then there's the motors so NEMA 17s are what's used in most 3d printers and they cost roughly what twenty dollars each so making a 3d printer under a hundred bucks is pretty much impossible using those motors what it appears they have done with this project is they've used cheaper geared stepper motors from China. And I'm talking about these ones. Some of you may have seen or even bought these before. These are extremely low cost, mass produced geared stepper motors from China. And there is an open source design 3D printer called the Cherry Printer, which I am considering making that uses these motors. They have been proven to work. They are very small, very low power, but they can, they can run a 3D printer if you treat them nicely. So what it seems the 101 Hero team have done is they've designed a 3D printer commercially around these motors. So what does that mean? It means that this printer is going to be very slow, not much power at all, so the head's going to have to be very light on the extruder axis, and the build volume therefore will be quite small. But it means instead of spending $20 for motors, they're spending probably $1 or $2, which is why this price point starts to make sense. And why, as I looked into this campaign, it went from me thinking, oh, it's just like another Olo, to me thinking, actually, there is some credibility to this project actually being fulfilled and working. And this is pretty cool too. So basically, they have a video from start to finish of their their functional prototype actually printing something. So I looked at that board, I thought it was a Melzi 3D printer control board initially, but it looks too different. So it's probably a homebrewed low cost solution. And that's the printer itself. So it is a Delta design. There is huge benefits in Delta designs in terms of cost savings, because as I said, each axis is symmetrical. You don't have to design a really fancy box to hold all sorts of axes in place and you only use three motors to control the entire movement, which is really quite neat. So there is downsides to deltas, obviously. The build volume in this machine is going to be minuscule. Essentially, you're looking at, according to their specs, 150 diameter, because it's a delta robot. The build volume is not a square or cube. It is, it's nothing like that. It is a diameter. And then it tapers towards the top to 100 high. The reason it tapers is each arm on that delta design starts colliding with the top of the printer. Well, it doesn't collide, but it's a soft limit. And that means as you get to the top, it can't go as far to the edge. So you don't get a cylinder of 150, you get a, a cone, essentially, of 100. So your build volume on this machine is going to be very tiny. Do not expect to print anything major or functional on this 3D printer. But again, that's not why I've backed it. So in terms of materials, they are saying it can do PLA, ABS, HIPS. Um, again, I would probably say you're going to be restricted to PLA. 
I don't believe this is heated. I didn't see any mention of a heated bed upgrade in the campaign as yet. And I don't think there's any point in a machine like this. Like the Fabricator Mini, I would run this just for PLA. It's a nicer plastic to deal with. There's no warping to worry about. There's not really much smells coming off it. And it is cheap and it will print fine without having to worry about it. So like I said, this printer isn't very fast and as you can see it moving around, there's a lot of, lot of backlash and that sort of thing. It's probably a bit hard to tell because the camera's losing focus now and then, but it's not gonna be the most accurate printer by all means. But this is another point where I found their campaign quite honest and realistic. If we go back to the campaign itself and go down to their specifications, that's the pyramid they've printed Fine, it looks pretty rough, it's pretty small, but it's not actually too bad. And what I really found quite nice and honest about them was in their specifications for print resolution. So you'll know if you've been shopping for 3D printers, people say stuff like 20 micron print layer resolution and stuff like that. And you see it all the time, it's just bogus. It is complete, no one prints at 20 microns. So I do commend them for saying 50 to 350 micron layer. 50 again is very fine, not many people do that, but on a machine so tiny you might, but 350 is realistically not too bad for a printer like this, small, cheap, the prints will be fast and they'll be a little bit rough, but do you really care if this is the cheapest printer you can afford and you're getting your feet wet into 3D printing? So something really important to note here is there is two versions of the machine. There is the consumer version and the design and developer version. And the differences are pretty important. So in the consumer version, it is SD card only, and it's saying that it's for effortless plug and play using tested G code from their website. That's kind of pointless in my opinion, because I don't want to print stuff from other people's websites. I want to print my own things. So that's why they've got the design and developer version where you can run it tethered via USB to your favorite slicing software. And that's pretty cool. You know, you don't have to use some sort of app that's locked you in. You can just use another slicing software like Simplify 3D or Repetier, something like that. So it's important to note that you need to tell them. I think it's a $5 difference for the developer version. So you pledge $5 extra and tell them in a private message you want the, de the design and developer version. Otherwise you will get the consumer version, which I think is kind of pointless to be honest, unless you can just load your own G code, which I don't see why they'd make two boards at a machine this cheap. I don't see why they'd differentiate that. So maybe it's just like a tiny difference, but oh well, five bucks extra, not really a big deal at this price point. So as I said, this machine is not coming fully assembled. It's coming like this, flat packed, which is not a problem. The Wanhao i3 comes flat packed and it saves bucket loads on shipping. You're not shipping air, you're just shipping the machine packed flat. And I'm not gonna expect it to come in a lovely plush box like the Trinus did, but I am expecting it to arrive pretty well packed in a flat pack format, with it, which you can just bolt into place, which is pretty easy. It looks like it's pre-wired. The wiring looms look pretty simple for a machine like this. And I don't suspect it will take longer than 10 minutes to actually fully assemble. In terms of their timeline, they're projecting to start shipping in October. Again, all 3D printer Kickstarters tend to go way over time, so I'm not expecting them to meet that guideline. But if you go to one of their updates, they have shown pictures of tooling, which is really promising. So here is some tooling renders that have done, and they look really, they're not just rushed. You know, they've got the sprues in there, they've got the flow paths, they've got the, the cooling paths for the, for the tool. So this is, for all I know, they may even have started making the tooling, but that's really, really promising and adds lots of credibility to the project. But what about the people behind it? Who make the 101 Hero? Let's find out about that. So if you look into the bio, there is not much bio. And this is a little bit worrying. Basically, it says our mission at 101 Hero is to make 3D printing accessible and dependable for everyone. And it has this guy called Weilong Yu. So I looked him up and I found him on LinkedIn. Possibly the same guy and I think it is because if you look at the location, North Carolina, and then here, North Carolina. So I think it's the same guy, and it may be a pet project, or he's teamed up with a team in China to make this machine, but there's not really any company as such behind it. It looks like a team that's formed to make this printer. So I would love if the guys at 101 Hero get in touch with me and tell me more about who you are. You know, what's your, what's your directive? What's your company? Have you done any hardware projects before? I would love to hear about it because 
this, you know, to have a machine with tooling renders already is really promising. It shows that they, they kind of know what they're doing. And also in terms of their goal, it only launched like a couple of days ago, like a week ago, I think. And it's, well, it started at 20,000 for a goal and now it's at 132,000, which is crazy. So these guys may well hit the million mark like the Olo did. We will have to see. But in terms of something that will be delivered, I have pretty high faith that this machine will ship. So that's one thing. But what about what you're getting? Do I think this is a good starter 3D printer? Probably not. So this is a super cheap 3D printer and it's kind of an experiment into what we might see in the future from 3D printers. But whether it's actually gonna be useful, I would say not really. It's gonna be low speed, low power due to the small motors, tiny build volume, and probably not very accurate due to the mechanical parts. They're injection molding the arms for the delta arms. So there's gonna be some slop in that. And there's always slop in the, in the joints. So in terms of it being the best printer in the world, definitely not, but I'm backing it as an exercise to kind of be in the bleeding edge of the cheap printers as they start emerging. And I think we're gonna to start to see more machines like this where the motors are fine tuned. We may even start seeing, and I said this at my in my 3D printer rant like more than a year ago, we might even start seeing brushed motors with a geared system and an encoder, an optical encoder like you see in your three, in your regular printers. We might even start seeing that because it drops the price even further. And once that happens, we might start seeing FDN printers sub sub $100 in the stores. They might have cartridges, but who knows? That's that's great because I want 3D printing to be more accessible. That's why I make this channel. So thanks for watching guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about this 3D printer. Do you think it's a revolutionary idea to have one at this price point or do you think it's just so cheap that it's just going to be so low cost and the parts are going to be so poor quality that it's just not going to be worthwhile? I'd love to know what you think. And yeah, I have taken a punt on this. Kickstarter projects are not guarantees. They're pretty much like donations. I may never see that money again but I'm willing to do it to see where this goes because I'm really excited about the idea of 3D printers becoming so cheap that anyone can try 3D modeling and 3D printing and get their hands on one without having to outlay hundreds or thousands of dollars. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, please hit that subscribe button, guys. I really love doing this and I'd love to have you on board so you don't miss any future videos. And also, I have a Patreon, which I have been mentioning all this week. So if you want to support the channel, I do this full time and you can do it from a dollar a month up and it's completely optional, but I do have some cool perks in there if you want to check them out. So you can follow the Patreon link there and it'll take you to there, take you to my Patreon. That's the one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. And also, if you want to see another video on Kickstarter projects, I've done two already. I've done the Anvil, and I've done the uh, mini toy, which didn't really get as much praise as this project from me. But if you're interested, you can check out the links. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you again very shortly here on Maker's Views. Catch you later.